We're rolling. All right, now we're going to return to the sniffer program now. We're going to do another capture. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back up to do a capture. Go ahead and get this started. Start the capture here and we get the capture going. And for this one, what we're going to look at in this demonstration here is we're going to go ahead and take and look at some ICMP traffic. Now we might not see any up here coming by, so let's go ahead and create some, make our life a little simpler here. I'm going to do is clear off the screen, and then I'm going to take here, and I'm going to do a ping, and I'm going to do it out to yahoo.com. Then I've placed a dash T on here at the end. The dash T just means continue the ping, so it won't stop after four or five times. So now I get my ping started here. I'm going to take and minimize this back down out of the way, and oh, look, sure enough, there we see our pings coming by. So here they are. We see some ping stuff, ICMP coming by. Now let's go ahead and let's stop that capture where we can take and look at one of these in a little bit more detail. All right, so I've highlighted one of these here. I've highlighted this ICMP ping request. And so as we've seen earlier, here is the Ethernet header or the Ethernet frame. Here is the IP header. And then IP in this case is carrying the ICMP, which in this case is the ping packet. Now a ping happens to be an ICMP type 8 is a ping request and a type 0 is a ping reply that we see on this. And this is that information right along here that we see. So remember the IP header started here. That ping header starts right about over in here is where we see it. So we see it starting right about here and we see the actual data right down in here. Because remember, ping was just really set up and its goal or its purpose is just to check connectivity to tell us we have a connection between here and there. So what happens is the system simply puts these values in here that we see in this case the alphabet. It repeats this through and by doing this it can take and give us something to ping over there and then bounce back where we have some, some actual data in there that we can measure when we come back. We have some other things here in the ping header like a checksum, an identifier, and a sequence number. This is how we keep up if there's more than one ping taking place. So for example here we see this one is 96. And let's go back a couple here. You see this one here has a totally different number on it. And if we come back here and look at this one, You see on here, this is this number here. So you see these numbers are changing here. So that's how we keep up and we have to have a way to know which ping request goes with which ping reply when we send these through here. And this is the most common type of ICMP messages of ping. It's very useful for us to take and measure connectivity as in this case. But on the other side, this is a something that an attacker would take and potentially use to see if the system is actually up or if it's actually alive. So, you know, in many cases what you see is is administrators have disabled ping from working in a network anymore. Many administrators block this stuff at the firewall and just simply don't allow it in or out.